challenged as an educator by Sir Ken Robinson's description of the importance of creativity in education and how it is usually lacking. This fertile ground, this richness of ideas, was for many years reserved for the chosen few. Our guest today, Chris Anderson, had the vision to share TED with the world. As a result, instead of a thousand TEDsters being inspired for four days out of the year, millions of people are listening and sharing their own ideas throughout the year. I never imagined I'd have this opportunity. Thank you, Chris. It certainly gives me great pleasure to represent the board at this particular ceremony and to reiterate our great pride in Chris Anderson as an alumnus, a distinguished alumnus of Woodstock School. Um, most kids grow up with people who are like them, you know, same cities, same country, same color, uh, same cultural assumptions, same income level. Here at Woodstock, not so much. I mean, when you first come here, it's a real job, isn't it? It is admittedly one of the most beautiful places on planet Earth, but you come here and you have to mix with people from 25, 30 countries. And frankly, some of them seem downright weird. <laughs> but after you've spent a bit of time here, you, you've got to know each other's stories, they've got to know your story, you discover that those superficial differences of colour and nationality and so on, they actually don't matter that much. Um, you know, we're just human. We all laugh, we all cry, we all love, and we all bleed. But that subtle difference that has gone on in your head in the time that you're here, that actually puts you in a tiny minority of the world's people. So what I believe is that being at Woodstock, what goes on in your brain, one of the most profound and lasting effects of a Woodstock education is the expansion of that circle of empathy. And I think it's going to play a big part in, in, the, in each of your lives. Because what it means is that the future in the future, people who talk, who dismiss, you know, people because of where they're from, are going to seem very small-minded and ignorant, backward. The future is going to belong to global souls, to people like you. And the true global souls are people who don't just think that way. They feel it. They know to their very core that the only sense of we that matters is one that includes everyone. So I don't need to go all kumbaya on you, but um, <laughs> I, I really think this is real and it will make a difference in your lives. It certainly um, ended up making a difference in mine. You know, when I, I started feeling that England was too small for me and, um, and that I, I could hear America calling, 
That was Woodstock doing that. That was Woodstock in my head. And it opened up doors of opportunity that I could never have achieved any other way. When, um, when I took over TED and saw that this content was so amazing, it just had to be shared for free with the rest of the world. That was Woodstock. And when just this year we started to say, hey, let's let anyone in the world run their own TED branded event. Um, so that just in this first year, there have been 300 events in 50 countries and 40,000 people have had the chance to discuss ideas and the power of ideas. That was Woodstock. So I, I certainly, I know that I personally have a huge debt of gratitude to this place. You may or may not feel it right now, but I promise you that you will too. So that's my message. Think about this gift. You know, without even trying, you are gently, gradually becoming a global soul. That makes you a child of the future. Think about that. Cherish it. Nourish it. Because you and your classmates I don't you be on the winning side here. The world is ready for you now. Actually, the world needs you. So good luck, and thank you. Thank you. 